Okay, our next session is the role of government in wildlife conservation, and I've got John Wahaka, uh, Chair of the Board of Trustees for the Kenya Wildlife Service. John, thank you so much for joining us. Would everybody show their applause for John? Thank you very much. Now you see the government. Um, <clears throat> First, I start by complaining that the millennials were given 20 minutes and the whole government is given just 10 minutes. <laughs> and threatened that if I'm not done in that, within that time, I will be kicked out. Um, so, just, about, just to, to show you the kind of resources that we protect, uh, you are always being told of the big fine But we also have lots of others. We actually have about 400 species of mammals and 1,105 1, species of birds. So we are not just about the, the big fine. And we want you to, to market Kenya as a country that, is, uh, that offers almost everything from the sea level to the highest mountain. And we have other animals like this one. If I ask you what this, you say it's a zebra, and you are right. But it's a zebra that is almost exclu exclusively found in Kenya. And there are many other uh, species that are only found in Kenya, which we normally don't talk about. Wonderful birds, I said we have 1,000 um, and over bird species. We have fishes from the Indian Ocean to the, the rivers that flow from Mount Kenya. We have habitats from the mountain tops. We have forests right from um, the mangroves to the forests in Mount Kenya. And we have lakes where we have diverse wildlife, savanna habitats. And now to talk about the role of the government uh, in, in conservation in Kenya, the foundation for conservation of Kenya's natural resources can be traced to what our first president said just a month or so before he became president. And I'm going to read this because um, it's, it's a great statement. He said the natural resources of this country, its wildlife, which offers such an attraction to visitors from all over the world, the beautiful places in which these animals live, the mighty forests which guard the water catchment area, so vital to the survival of man and beast, are a priceless heritage for the future. And the government of Kenya, this is the commitment, this is the pledge he made just before we became independent. The pledge is that the government of Kenya, fully realizing the value of the natural resources, pledges itself to conserve them for posterity with all the means at its disposal, underline that. And we therefore invite other nations, like we're inviting you, the hoteliers, and we have so <coughs> many other partners, um, and lovers of nature through the world, throughout the world to assist in honoring this pledge. So the first president's view and vision on wildlife was that Kenya must conserve this priceless heritage. And he saw it as wildlife, wildlife habitats, and forests. And he saw the value of doing this. There is beauty in these animals, and there is economic value, and there is value for life. Life of people and beasts. And his vision was to conserve for posterity and use all means at the government disposal and also promote partnerships. So the role of government is mainly in governance. The constitution of Kenya requires that the government protects all animals, either in national parks or on private land. That's the role of government. Then we have the minister whose responsibility is to formulate the relevant policies, legislation, and strategies. And then we have a board that oversees the implementation of what is in the constitution 
and what is in the legislation and what is in the policy. And financing conservation is expensive. We need lots of money for staff. We have about 6,000 staff. We need aircraft to do many things. We have fences. We have probably 1,000, 2,000 kilometers of fence that are so expensive to build. Many vehicles are needed to patrol and provide other services. We protect rare and endangered species, and we are doing a good job at this. The poaching levels, I can say, have declined, and I think Kenya is now uh, doing a lot better than it used to do in the, in the past. We support conservation efforts by other partners, um, and some of the partners we have here um, are I can see him, him being wired, but uh, Dixon, if you could raise up your hand, uh, and Tom, you'll see them. They are one of the greatest partners because through community conservation efforts, we have protected more land for wildlife than all the national parks and reserves put together. And that is within the last uh, uh, 15 years. And with uh, the support of great partners, like um, AWF, who is here, <coughs> who is represented by the president here. The other role of the government is to promote conservation, education. We, the government has established um, universities and colleges and institutes that uh, help promote conservation education. We also, they also, the government also coordinates international conventions, uh, such as the CBD Convention on Biological Diversity, the CITES, uh, the UN, uh, <coughs> this the UN, uh, whatever on climate change, <laughs> framework conference on climate change, yes. and many others. And, and uh, Kenya is one of the biggest drivers of uh, what happens in CITES, especially on issues such as elephants. Uh, then we have uh, other uh, organizations of government uh, like, like that promote Kenya. Um, the Kenya Tourist Board, so that visitors can come here and um, enjoy the magical Kenya. And when the visitors come here, these are the, some of the things that they, they, they see. This is, um, you just sit there and see the theater of wildlife. See our rhinos, our elephants, and you also have some uh, n nice experiences. <laughs> and this you don't fear because nothing has ever happened. They just come, also uh, ha uh, enjoy your presence, and then they go. And some things only happen in Kenya, so as you take the, the uh, photo of a lion, it can also do the same to you. Okay. So as you invest, we would like you to, to, we would like to invest, uh, to invite you okay. to invest in our national parks. We rely so uh, heavily on the, the money that we collect from visitors in order to finance conservation. So as, as much as you can, we would uh, invite you to invest in, in national parks. And when you do so, we would like you to come and create memorable and magical experiences for the visitors. Because we want those visitors, when they go out there, they will say the, the place to go is Kenya. And when you are there, when you are out there, we want you to know who has the right of way. It's not the visitor, because we want these uh, areas protected for posterity. So we want you to give way to our wildlife so that uh, we can enjoy them now and in the times to come. I took this uh, photograph, I don't want to tell you where, and I was counting about over 20 minibuses around an attraction, and the attraction was elephants. And this is one of the ways to destroy uh, these resources. So uh, I want to thank you for, for listening. Um, I was, I'm checking on my time there, and I want to invite any questions. And my first question is, why did you give me 10 minutes? 10 minutes? Because you did it so perfectly in the time allowed. I mean, everybody got it. You were brilliant. Um, 
So John, yes. tell us, do we, do we have any questions from the audience? Any questions? Because I think it's fantastic what the government's doing and what you guys are doing in terms of protecting the wildlife and, and taking the lead. But what is it in terms of investment opportunities in the, uh, the national parks? We've got the investors here. Maybe you can explain some of the opportunities. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that we did was to prepare a prospectus for the investors here. And we are saying we have ample opportunities in our national parks, right from the marine national parks up to the mountain national parks up there on top of Mount Kenya. And the pro pros uh, th th this prospectus, which we have, and Salome has, has, has them, um, is providing information on the specific investments. Some are sites that have not been developed and you can develop them. Others are existing facilities that you can use as they are or improve on them. And others are some that you, some, some restaurants that uh, are there. They are in wonderful locations and we just need you people to come and invest. I want to remind you the money that we get from the visitors is the money that we used to protect these animals. So if we don't get visitors, then we have no money to protect our wildlife. Thank you very much. John, thank you so much. Show your appreciation to John Wataka.